Hi, my name is Nick Bartolotta, founder of Dynamic Contraction Technique. And tonight we're going to answer some questions revolving around erectile dysfunction, also known as ED. Uh, but I think before I can talk about why DCT um, and resistance stretching work to resolve uh, ED, you have to sort of understand the mechanism for why most people are experiencing erectile dysfunction. So in order to break that down, we have two things here. We have <clears throat> a map of the, the muscles of the body, um, particularly the deep muscles uh, of the abdomen uh, running across the hips. Um, but then also I have a picture of Tom Meyer's anatomy trains, which show the fascial lines or trains as Tom Myers calls them that run and connect those muscles to each other and run all the way through the body. So ED is a combination of tension across both systems of tension in the body. And if you're not familiar with this, the fascia, connective tissue, um, is a different type of tension than the local tension we get inside muscles. So the way you can understand this and the way that I explain this in DCT and in the courses I teach is that uh, fascia or connective tissue is more of a global uh, tension, meaning it's a tension that is more like a wetsuit around the whole body and actually running through all the organs and all the tissues of the body. Um, whereas muscle tension more has to do with specific tension in the fibers of individual muscles and how that tension within the fibers of the individual muscles affect joint function um, and apply pressure to the system. Now, <clears throat> erectile dysfunction is a combination of tension in both fascia and muscle. So it's a global problem and a local problem of tension. And I'm gonna go ahead and break down the areas that are the culprits, and then I'll tell you why and explain how DCT actually works to resolve that problem. So basically, <clears throat> the primary culprit to erectile dysfunction is the deep psoas muscle as it connects to the iliacus and becomes the iliopsoas, crossing down to the femurs here. It's also related to uh, the adductor muscles, which you see here and here, and very slightly to the deep uh, abdominals, the, the rectus uh, abdominis in the middle, and then those, those deep transverse uh, abdominals as they invest into the uh, fascia that relates and connects muscle to the global tension. Okay, so to make this more specific, um, I'll, I'll give you an analogy of what happens when you get tension, either in muscle or fascia. Um, and I call that a, a garden hose analogy, where if you're trying to water your garden and someone keeps crimping the garden hose, the water can't get to the plants and the plants obviously don't get oxygen, they don't get nutrients. So your garden essentially dies um, or becomes very malnourished and struggles a lot. So with the human body, you can think of the garden hose as the, the veins and the capillaries that run through both connective tissue, but then also the muscles of a certain area. And with erectile dysfunction, the muscles that run closest to and around the genitals and would have the the largest effect on the pelvic floor muscles are the psoas and iliacus, and then the investing fascia that actually connects through and connects those large muscles to the pelvic floor muscles. Um, so as tension forms in both the muscle locally and the fascia globally, it starts to constrict on the vasculature. And what that does is that slows down the exchange of blood across tissues. Now you can imagine if you're having trouble getting an erection, it has a lot to do with the lack of ability to, for blood to pass easily into the penis 
um, fully. You might be able to get a little bit, you might be able to get, you know, semi excited, but then you just can't really get a full erection. And that's what they call it erectile dysfunction. But <clears throat> imagine if there was a method or a technique that allowed you to actually remove the tension that had formed directly in the psoas and iliopsoas and other techniques also that taught you how to release those most important muscles from the global fascia that's also related in restricting blood flow. And that's exactly what we've done with DCT. We actually hold the patents on the only mechanized forms of machines that can assist in releasing the psoas specifically. Um, and our techniques, the hands-on techniques and the techniques we teach for yourself, work off this principle that we call contralateral pelvic stabilization. Now what that means is if you try to isolate the psoas to do uh, strength training, you might have done this at the gym, you stand at a machine, you're standing on one leg and then you're lifting the other leg up against a, a pad trying to isolate the hip, uh, the hip flexors. Now, you're only capable to lift as hard as uh, the standing leg can bear the weight and that's not very hard at all. So what we figured out and what we patented was that if we put the body, the human body, where one leg is out straight and one leg is up in the air and stabilized there. So kind of like if you imagine someone laying on their back, one leg straight up, that leg is blocked straight up, then the person can do leg lifts. And because the, the, the raised leg is stabilized, you can actually specifically isolate, truly isolate the psoas and iliopsoas. And what DCT does that other techniques and resistance stretching techniques don't do is that we are able to initially isolate precisely the muscle and find a burn or an activation of the tissue in that muscle that then allows us to do very, very specific eccentric loading, right? And an eccentric contraction is when a muscle is contracted, like my biceps, and then I'm overpowering the resistance in that biceps. And you can see how it's still tense, but getting pulled apart. And now that mechanism of an eccentric load is what allows us to go inside the body and have the tissue itself grip against the tension, the knots, and begin to release that tension from the inside out. It is impossible for a therapist to do a trigger point or reach inside your body and pull tension out of a muscle that way. You can't grab both ends of the muscle and yank the tension out. But using DCT, we can mechanically, and using contralateral stabilization, we can mechanically create a force that's directly opposite of a concentric contraction, which forms the tension in the first place. Now, where this combines with fascia is fascia, the wetsuit we talked about, if you sit still, in this position that I'm in, even just sitting with my legs bent to 90, my fascia is trying to basically lay down tissue and heal me into this position. So if we have the typical uh, type A worker that goes to the gym three times a week, works nine to five or longer, uh, sitting at their desk, then goes and plays in their softball leagues, football leagues, whatever they're doing on the weekends, you can imagine they're getting very strong in the muscle, the muscles themselves. Uh, if you're a runner at all or a cyclist, you're using the hip flexors tremendously, which means you're forming a ton of local tension across those muscles, right? Crimping the garden hose. But then you go and sit sedentary passively all day, every day of the week, and you're binding that tension in with the global wetsuit. Right? I say it all the time, if I put a wetsuit on that was 10 sizes too small and then tried to move my body, you could obviously see how the wetsuit was gonna restrict motion. But what you can't see is that that global tension isn't just around the outside. It invests in and through all of the muscles underneath. So when a muscle gets locally and globally tight, it literally 
is being like gummed up from the inside out. So what we've done with DCT is we've created a, a protocol. I, I wouldn't call it a protocol exactly because it changes depending on feedback from the patient. But we've developed a system of isolating the global fascia tension from the local muscle tension. And for erectile dysfunction, when we release the local muscle tension of the psoas and iliopsoas primarily, and then put your body in a posture where we utilize resistance stretching, but in a posture that actually is designed to stretch the deep front line in this case, all the investing fascia that runs through those muscles, we get an immediate effect on increasing blood flow to the penis. And what's incredible about this is sometimes we can do one rigorous treatment of those muscle groups and have a tremendous impact on um, the size, duration of the erection, and even people who haven't had erections in years call me the next day and say, you know what, this is a little embarrassing, but I woke up uh, this morning with morning wood for the first time uh, in years. And it's not uncommon at all. This, this is something that's very uh, typical feedback that we get. Now, we've never really uh, gone into creating uh, a course for uh, erectile dysfunction but as I've been dealing with in my clinic, a lot more people coming in with pelvic pain or pelvic dysfunction um, who are dealing with things like ED, um, I've been inspired to actually outline it and explain it to people in a way that's digestible and then make these protocols for self-stretching and assisted stretching available um, so that you can resolve something that is simply completely resolvable through a non-invasive, non-drug-based uh, treatment. Uh, and that's what's amazing about DCT. So I hope that uh, that wasn't too complex. I tried to simplify it as best I could. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Check us out at dctforhealth.com. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.